This is Code.org. Let's see what we're up to. Filtering through the noise. Next, we will need to write a few different filtering algorithms within the app. The first one will compare the genre that the user selects with the descriptions within the Netflix data set that we have saved in the Netflix list. Okay, the Netflix genre list, guys, is a variable here, right? Now, where is that coming from? It's coming from a column in the Netflix data table. How do I know that? Well, if I head over to data here, I can see this get column and it tells me, ah, it's the table name and the column name. So where do I find that table? They hide it. They hide it up here in this data button here. And if I click, here's my Netflix data. So great. This is kind of clarifying this for me. Now, Netflix, what am I looking at? Mm, it's hard to keep track of all these, to be honest. So be kind. It is. Uh, genre. Up oh, right here. Okay. Oh, yeah. So a list of the genres. So that big, all of that data, all of these items get saved into a big old list here. All right. Now, what do they want from me? Create a filter by genre function that creates the filtered list of movies narrowed down by the genre based on user input. Okay. Did they give us anything to start? Yes. Filter by genre. And we have this thing called temp list. Great. So it sounds like we need a filter by genre, and then it looks like we're going to return a list of those items. Great. So I'm going to use what they provided. Okay. And then the parameter, a string value from the user genre list at the genre index. Okay. So what that just tells me is it's a genre. So my assumption there is that it's going to match one of these genres here, like thriller, yada, yada, yada. So I'm looking for what John, what items in my list have that genre? So if I'm looking through data, if I'm going to loop through it, hint, what do I need? I need a loop. So I'm going to go over here and grab a for loop. Now var i, that's fine. Var index is equal to zero. I is less than four. Now we could go over here and figure out how long my genre list is, right? I could count all these up. What a pain. Don't do that. It's not really good practice either. Instead, I know I want to go to the end of the list. And so what I'm going to do, instead of having a four here, that'd be weird for me. Instead of having a four here, I'm going to do the Netflix. And remember, you have to have the spelling exact genre dot length. And what this will do is it will give me the, however long this genre list is, it's going to grab that number and set it here. So we'll say there's 100 items. What this says is I always has to be less than 100. And so just to recall for a for loop, all this fancy thing is saying is everything in this mouth here will loop. How long will it loop? Well, I must start at zero. Each loop, we will add one to I, and I must always be less than the length of the list. I'm going to pretend that means 100. Now, what do I want to do inside of the list? Well, I want to be looking for a movie that matches whatever genre here. Right. So then I'm actually just to make this more readable. I really like the idea of having a variable here that says current uh, genre. Right. So what's the current genre that we are dealing with? And what I will what that will be is my Netflix genre. I for index. So whatever item is in our Netflix list, Netflix genre list at I, I would start at zero. So what item would be at I zero? And remember guys, indexes start at zero. Um, so even though this was item one, it's index zero. And it's weird because if I scroll all the way to the bottom or wherever, even though this is item 311, it's index 310. So just keep that in mind. That being said, index zero is documentaries. So that's what would current genre be equal to on the first round of the loop. Now comes the condition. I want to know if this is the genre I am looking for. So let me head over here to if. So if current genre equals equals, I am doubting myself now. Because if I scroll through this list, oh, Notice here, sometimes things have multiple genres. Oh, I'm glad I looked. So it's not going to be equals equals. We don't care if it equals it. We didn't need to know if the string contains it. So if our current genre, and maybe I should say genres, I'm going to leave it like this. But we need to know if inside of this these genres, there is the one I am looking for. Hmm. Bam. 
I'm going to use includes. I was hoping they provided this to us. Okay, so this gives me hope. Um, so if the current genre, right, has the genre, which is the one I'm looking for, right, then I know, ah, I need to add that to my list. And what's my list? My list is temp list. And I'll just smack it onto the end of my list by using append item. So append to item, my list name is temp list. And what am I, I'm going to move my arrows over to delete this. What am I going to smack onto the end of the list? I just need the index that I'm currently at. I just want to know where in the line, where in the list I am, so I can go back and use that information later. And so the index I am currently at is I. I. Right? And so now I'm saving that into this temporary list. Now, why do we want the index and not maybe the genre that I'm currently at? Because we can then use, if I know that genre, my genre list at index zero is a match, well, then I can flip through my titles list, also calls, also at index zero and print out the title. I know the spot in the list that I need to use on other lists, right? So if this is index six, then I know index six or if this is index two, one, index one, then I know I might want the title at index one. And in the title list, I say get index one. And in the date added list, I get index one because I know those are all matches. So that's why we're keeping track of the indexes. Now, the final thing I need to do is return them because they want that to be the result of this method where we might make use of that later. I'm not seeing return right off the bat, which is fine. You guys can, oh no, they already gave us the return. Sweet. All right, so this is looking Good. Yep, 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 yep. That all looks good. Test your code. Boom. No errors. Test your code. There is a watcher set in the debugger. Let's look at the debugger. Yep. That will display the data inside our filtered values list. When you run the program and select a different genre, you will see the index values that are saved into this list as well as the length of the list. Okay. Hmm. Okay, wait a minute. So testing this, guys, you'll notice mine didn't update, but I'm wondering where this method is being called. So, no, no, no. Filter by genre, right? Where am I actually calling this that there's no change? So let me scroll down and see what's going on. Oh, let me hide this guy. Filter by genre is what I'm looking for. So it's being called here. Ah. And there's no value being assigned. Interesting. So what we can do, and I don't know if it explicitly said this last time, is we can use the information from last time, user genre, and then we updated the genre index globally from that method. So this is stuff we set last time. User genre is the list up at the top but we created or we updated this genre index from the last bubble. Okay, now let me see if this helped. And okay, let's click this and then sure I'll select a year and then I actually need to tell it to go. Ooh, ah, and so what genre? Adventure, let me go back here. Okay, well, let me pick one of theirs. Horror, 96, bam, cool, sports, 50, looking good. Thriller, 138. And action, 197. Cool. All right. We got it. Awesome. Onward.